watching Amusaholics and this morning we're at Chesington World of Adventures. Yeah! Yeah, it's going to be our first time since they opened the world of Jumanji. So we're really looking forward to getting in there, trying out Mandrill Mayhem, uh, obviously uh, Ostrich Stampede and Mamba Strike hopefully as well. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, yeah, the only thing we're a little bit worried about is we were looking at the app on the way here because you can uh, sort of do your virtual queue line booking because right now it's only virtual queue line for Mandrill Mayhem. We were a bit concerned because it said closed today. Um, so we were a little bit worried about that when we first arrived. We just wanted to let you know there's nothing to worry about. When we actually got into the park after 10 o'clock, the virtual queue line did open. There it goes now. And uh, it did. It was available for walking, wasn't it? Yeah, and there's people on it now. So. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, we're looking forward to getting in there in a moment and giving it a very first ride. Yeah, really excited for this one. Love wind coasters generally. So. Yeah, it looks like a fantastic coaster. It's got a limit, of, a height limit of 1.2 meters. So you're going to be at least 1.2 meters to ride is a bit lower than some larger coasters so that's really positive um, and obviously suits Chesterton really well good for families yeah. exactly yeah so uh, yeah we're gonna head on into the world of Jumanji now yeah let's get going well, here we are making our way into the world of Jumanji for our first time ever We've got the Jaguar shrine up in the distance that's my favourite nice bit of theme in here over on the left Again, for those who seek to find a way to leave their world behind. Nice photo uh, piece here and a map of the area. The centre of the world of Jumanji. Got this awesome signage on the floor. And there it goes in the distance. Mandrill Mayhem. Mandrill Mayhem queue line entrance. Just about to get our virtual queuing passes scanned. Whew. Walking through the Mandrill Mayhem queue, and it is a long cattle style queue. Um, obviously very empty right now, first thing in the morning, unless you get an early ride reservation. But why make everyone walk this whole distance? Why not have some sections that will open out? I haven't seen any. It doesn't look like the queue line can be made shorter. Like it's all welded in place. So, a bit of a weird one. Uh, correction, there are some areas where you can open the queue out, but they just don't seem to have done it. They've just put it at maximum length straight away, which is interesting. But uh, yeah, we're approaching the... Uh, I dare to call it the shed <laughs> now, so yeah, don't know that we're too far off. I'll be back in 10 minutes, but if I'm not, read this again. With regards, Nigel. Oh, Nigel, where are you when we need you? Excited, Kayla? Yeah! Yeah, first ever ride. Not wing coasters. Yeah, really comfortable seats, aren't they? And uh, thrilling without the track being on your uh, underneath you. You're on the sort of side of the track as well, so should be good. As we're heading on towards the station building now, we can sort of start to appreciate the detail. Now we're getting close. Here we are, just about to enter the station. Unlike most stations, they seem to keep the whole area clear. And then you stand on a numbered spot and then walk into the station when the ride's ready. Nice theme in here though. Seriously good detail. Yeah. Final walk up.
very first couple of rides on Mandrill Mayhem. Yeah, we have one ride in the second row and one ride on the fourth row. Yeah, that's right, and uh, we took it in turns. Try I had the outer seat on the second row, Ken had the outer seat on the fourth row. Yep. There he goes now. <laughs> yeah, so what an amazing ride. Brilliant addition here in Chessington. The theming on it is absolutely incredible. Yeah. All the way through the queue line to the station, especially the station. Um, it's really cool how they built the area around the roller coaster and how you essentially sort of embark on this journey around the edge of the world of Jumanji and sort of ultimately end up at the Dragula Shrine uh, and then essentially have a roll back uh, through the layout as well. Yeah, now it's really, really fun, really smooth ride. It actually doesn't look that fast, but it's quite deceptive. <laughs> yeah, I think it's max speed is 42 miles an hour, but it feels quicker than that. Um, but it doesn't feel too fast. You can see they've really struck a really nice balance here between family friendly and running. Here goes again. Now you know the ride length. <laughs> and um, yeah, no, really, really enjoyed it. I mean, it's, you know, the boosters in there are sort of added to it as well. Just when you thought you were getting a little bit slow, you pick up the pace. Um, on our, both of our trains made it very high to the on the on the Helix all the way up through the Jaguar Shrine as well. Yeah, I, I love the inversions on it. That's that's really cool. When you come out your seats. Yeah, the inline rolls, nice and gradual. Um, you get like a nice um, zero gravity effect for a moment, um, and a nice bit of hang there as well. And um, yeah, it's just a really really good ride. It's very smooth. Um, and it sits right at the top end of family friendly coasters, doesn't it really? It's not an intense, intense ride, but um, you know, it is, they really have pushed the limit of, um, of sort of what sort of kids can enjoy really and families can enjoy. That's what Chessington needed um, because they've got a lot of roller coasters here, but um, they're all always really busy and because the parks are a really busy park anyway. It's just another area just to have people in. So making the queue times hopefully a bit less on some of the other rides as well. Yeah, that's right. I think it's obviously being just three rides here. There's also Mamba Strike and Ostrich Stampede, and that obviously really helps with the capacity of the park, having a whole new area for people to explore. And it, you know, just it does lessen the load on the other roller coasters. You know, especially Vampire and Dragon's Fury, which are always really busy. Um, and, you know, I'd say Mandrill Mayhem is probably the best roller coaster here, though. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Uh, virtual queuing, um, as I said earlier, we were a bit worried at first because the virtual queue line didn't seem to be working and it said it might be closed for the whole day, which we were dreading. Uh, that wasn't actually the case. Once 10 a.m. came around, the virtual queue opened. We were able to get a slot almost immediately. Um, since then, we've had about an hour uh, to an hour and a half wait in between slots, which I think is you know, reasonable. The most important thing is being a virtual queue line, you can go around the park and enjoy the parts of the park, can't you? So yeah, I think I think it's working quite well actually. Um, I wasn't sure at first, but actually I think it's okay really. Yeah. Um, operations are working really hard uh, to get the ride out as fast as possible. Obviously being a, um, a boomerang style coaster, it's only one train on there, um, and they are doing their best to get the trains out as fast as possible. Seems well organised. Seems well organised. Um, I mean, I don't understand why they don't send people straight into the station. They sort of have you waiting on, um, on, on numbers on the ground just before you enter the station area. And um, I don't fully understand that. It might be to allow people who are already on their time to get off. Um, it doesn't seem to work that well in that sense. But they're doing their best and, um, you know, I think their operations have been very good today. Yeah. Well then, let's uh, carry on and see what else there is to explore in the world of Jumanji. So as you come out of Mandrill Mayhem, go into the little bazaar area where you can get your merch. It's really nicely touch, nice touch how it's sort of like a tent. That's uh, several different t-shirt designs, body warmer, lots of plushies, also some uh, Jumanji lanyards, mugs, bottles. There's some cold drinks there as well. We've even got the uh, sort of mobile fridge. And then obviously the ride photo redemption area over at the back. So made over to Mamba Strike. They give this one a go. Another ride that's opened with the Jumanji area. Hey, there it goes. There he goes, Mamba Strike. Up 
bit of speed once he gets going. About to change direction. Back more force than you realise when you're on it. And then over to the entrance to Ostrich Stampede. Let me check this one out now. It's a stampede! Wow, oh, ostriches. I do like the design of the uh cars on this ride. Got the wings painted onto the side and back of the cars as well. Here comes the ostrich stampede. Feel like the crazy frog, only the crazy ostrich. Quite a small ride, three seats. Uh, decent capacity overall. A couple of seats that are out of action already, which is a bit uh, disconcerting. But uh, yeah, it looks like a bit of fun. Well, we've just been on um, the other two rides in Jumanji World, and, uh, Mamba Strike, isn't it? Yeah, and Ostrich Stampede. Ostrich Stampede. Yeah, it's uh, really, really good rides. Um, you know, for, for small rides, obviously. Yeah. It was really, it was really good to experience them for the first time. Really, that was the main thing, wasn't it? It was. I mean, you know, it's fair. I say they're really, really good. That might be a bit of an over excitement from the first time of doing them. Really, um, they are very basic. Um, Mamba Strike was better than uh, Ostrich. Yes, but the seats were more uncomfortable. Uh, the seats on Mamba Strike are very small, um, so not great for adults. Particularly. Um, perfect for kids and sort of small people, but uh, we're, we're, I'm not particularly the smallest person in the world, so it's a bit of a tight squeeze for me. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't too bad though, um, it was an enjoyable ride, there was some decent force on there once yeah. it got going, um, and I liked that it spanned the one way and then stopped to span the other way uh, on Mamba Strike, that was nice. Um, so yeah, pretty decent ride. The queues get pretty long though, they get up to sort of an hour long on there, and I think part of the problem is they only have one operator. Yeah, so on the, the two little rides on Ostrich. That, that's right, yeah. So it's it's sort of tricky because they have to obviously uh, you know do everything, operate the ride, make sure the gates are all closed, get people in, get people out, um, and obviously it's a lot to do, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, uh, ostrich stampede. Um, as Kelly touched on, wasn't as good as Mamba Strike. That's probably the worst of the three rides in the uh, Jumanji era, in our opinion. Yeah. Uh, just because it's a bit like a crazy frog, where it kind of uh, goes round and, and hops. But not as crazy. But yeah, it's uh, lacking any real force behind those yeah. hops. There's no air time. Um, it's and not that... particularly long ride either. No, and the, the ride cycle's not particularly long either, and that's uh, that's really what makes it so disappointing. It's a shame, really, because it actually looks quite cool. The ostrich and the painted on the back of the cars with the, the wings, it's like uh, feathers even. And it looks like an ostrich with his wings open. And, um, you know, in terms of aesthetics, it's pretty pleasing, isn't it, really? Yeah. But in terms of an actual ride experience, it's just a little bit lacking, unfortunately. But um, yeah, Mandrill Mayhem is absolutely the star of this area, as you'd expect. And, um, and to be fair, it's overall is the best coaster in the park, I would say. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm over at Dragon's Fury entrance. Aim's ready to get on the rise that we didn't manage to get to on the season preview, so current wait time's 45 minutes. I'm gonna jump in now. Dragon's Fury, rapid lift hill. Here it comes, Dragon's Fury. Dragon's Fury, spinning coaster. I haven't been on for a while, so that was really nice to get back on there. Um, it wasn't quite as intense as I remember it being, if I'm honest with you. Uh, it was a really good ride, probably one of the most, if not the most intense here at Chessington. It's sort of pretty tired with Mandrill Mayhem, but it's a totally different experience. 
Um, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I totally forgot there was a second lift hill on there, which should have extended the layout slightly. That was really cool. Um, I would say the one thing that is not great is the way they operate the ride. Um, it's a four-seater ride, but only a maximum of three adults, probably due to weight constraints. And unfortunately, they don't manage that very well. Like, literally, most of the trains only had two people on them, which is just a waste. If you had a single rider queue in there, it'd be really easy just to stick a single rider on the other side to meet that maximum of three. Um, I'm sure they've got reasons for not doing it, but I just think it's a shame because um, I was right next to us at another single rider, and you know we could have got on there probably within 60 seconds if uh, if there was such a queue, whereas we had to wait 45, 50 minutes in the end. So that's unfortunate, but um, yeah, it's a solid ride and one of the most intense and thrilling rides here in Chessington. Been already aware of the uh, annual Wilderfest begins here at Chessington on the Monday the 31st of July. They've already got a lot of the props out ready. Those beautiful elephants. Big one and the baby elephant. So, what a great day we've had here at Chessington World of Adventures. Yeah, it's stop to ride a little bit. So. Yeah, the weather has not held out for us today, unfortunately. I mean, it's nowhere near as bad as it's supposed to be though, so that's a big plus. Yes. Uh, our first visit to World of Jumanji, you know, absolutely loved it. It really does take sort of theming uh, and immersion to the next level really. It's really what UK theme parks need right now, to be stepping up their game and bringing themselves in line with what there is in Europe. Um, and I think they're really doing it here, haven't they? I mean, we, uh, you noticed on the way out, didn't you? The whole area is actually a game board and it never clicked when we first <laughs> went in there. But um, as you sort of walk around, you realise the paths are, are sort of the paths you can take in the game of Jumanji itself. Um, and just the level of detail in there, the sound effects, um, all the vegetation starting to grow out really nicely now as well. Now the summer's come around. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, it's re really, like, really good addition to the park. Favourite ride in there? Yeah, obviously. Mandra Mayhem? Mandra Mayhem. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Ostrich Stampede uh, and Mamba Strike, a nice addition to the park. Anything's good to help boost that capacity and help reduce wait times. But um, Mandrel Mayhem is, is, in our opinion, the best ride here, isn't it? Yeah. We did have a ride on the back as well. We got lucky enough to get on the back. And going up that, fir that, that first bit out of the station at the, at the back was just fantastic. Up the spike, yeah. So. I don't, know, I don't think we mentioned earlier, but the back row of the the back row of the train has the seats reversed, so you're actually facing backwards rather than forwards compared to everyone else. And when you go out the first bike, whoa, there it goes. <laughs> uh, when you go out the station uh, up the first spike, you actually go out technically backwards, but if you're on the back, it's forwards, and it makes for a totally different ride experience, yeah, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And yeah, I think I agree with Katie. I think that was actually my favourite overall. I really enjoyed our first ride because it was just obviously as tall as that first ride, it's got that special feeling to it on the second row. But yeah, absolutely. Even having ridden, we even managed to get on the first row as well, didn't we? Yeah. So we got so lucky. And um, I still think overall the back row, which is technically the front row on the way back, is uh, is the best row on there. Yeah. Sadly, you can't choose, but um, yeah, no matter where you are on the ride, it's super thrilling. It's about to come flying past us again. <laughs> And um, you know, thoroughly enjoyable, absolutely exactly what this park needed. Fantastic move by Chessington. And yeah, we've uh, also had Aris had a little go on Dragon uh, Dragon's Fury. Uh, you decided to sit that one out, didn't you? But I did enjoy that. It was a decent ride. Um, not as thrilling as I remembered. The second lift hill caught me by surprise, but still a really great ride. And probably uh, those are totally different rides, sort of level pegging intensity wise with Bandra Mayhem. So you can see it's all very end of families and I think that's good really. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's been a nice been a nice day all round, especially you know, exploring the world of Jumanji. Yeah, we've had a good day off. Yeah. Well we hope you like this video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It means an awful lot to us and really helps out the channel. And if you have any comments or questions about Chessington or the world of Jumanji at all, drop those in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer them as soon as we can. Yep. And until next time. We hope you get out and explore amusement parks and more. See you next time.